you're tuned in to Steve Megatron on Altered Geek. Hello and welcome to Altered Geek. I'm your host, Steve Megatron Phillips, and in this episode of the podcast, I'll be talking about, well, I felt it was fitting to talk about, uh, a little bit of nostalgia of things that, that I remember as a kid uh, that really impacted me or things that I remember Uh now, granted, there's things I don't remember still, but I still thought it was it was kind of fun to to bring up uh, some of the nostalgic things that I, I did enjoy, uh, and and one of them is is games. And unfortunately, there's there's this point where you want to go back and play them for nostalgia's sake, just because you're like, you know, I've I've played the games I care about that are out now. What is there? To go back and play that I enjoyed as a kid. Uh, and I don't own a game system. I don't have any ambition to buy another game system. For one, they cost too much. And then the amount of money you have to pump into these things. Just for them to get replaced within three to five years. Uh, as opposed to something like the SNES. Where, you know, theoretically you could get that. And still be playing a lot of the stuff on it. Uh, it's... It's kind of tricky because I I used to be one of those guys that got a bunch of emulators and I used to and I, I realized that they're not technically legal unless you physically own the original cartridge or the the game itself because it's technically like a backup. Uh, so if you own it, they're they're technically okay, but it's still a moral gray area. Uh, but I used to do a lot of that and I I don't so much anymore. More so just because I I don't really want to have to go through the hassle. Uh, of it, I just want to be able to play the game, and that's that's kind of it. Uh, I dug up uh, the 1999 uh, Star Wars Pod Racer game the other day. I still had the disc. Uh, I was I was rifling through my desk uh, a couple months ago, and I found it, and I, I I was like, "Holy crap! I really miss playing this game because uh, you can customize your pod. You can go fast." Uh, I had a, my, my Xbox 360 controller in, which was much better than the uh, joystick and the gamepad I had way back in the day when it came out. Uh, and it actually controls a lot better with the Xbox 360 controller plugged into my computer. Uh, but no, I, I really enjoyed it. I had to go to, I think it was a website like Game Copy World, which used to, uh, back in the day, used to have a bunch of like, you could get the patches for games, you could get it so you could uh, replace certain files so you didn't need to get the CD. So you could essentially dump your whole CD to your computer and uh, play it and not need to pop the disc in every time you needed to play. Because a lot of the time it would uh, buffer or lag, uh, as they, they would say in modern terms for, for online gaming. And I I just I wasn't one of those people that liked to have the CD in. It, it just slowed things down. So I, I often did that. Uh, but no, it, I, I had to go there and get a... A patch for it so I could play without the CD and I think I ended up having to turn it into an ISO file uh, on my computer so that I could run it from the computer uh, because there were some complications and the nice part about the old games like that like the old pod racer you don't have to install them uh, it, it, which is kind of strange when you, you think about modern Windows you don't have to install them because they can't connect to anything uh, so they just ultimately play and so I, I was able to do that, and I played a few rounds of it. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, there was a couple cheat codes, which obviously don't work uh, to some capacity. I have to figure out how to get them to work. It, it's basically you just make the money kind of pop out. You know, it, it just you can put like four thousand credits uh, per per hit, and then you have to like exit out after you've saved, and then do it again. It was it was a trick that we, we used to do so we could get unlimited money and just upgrade our pods as much as we wanted. Uh, but it was a lot of fun, and I, I remember playing that a lot. Uh, another game that, up until about a year ago, I played a lot still, even after it came out, was Command & Conquer Red Alert, Red Alert 2, and uh, Yuri's Revenge. Some of my favorite uh, uh, strategy games are, are the Command & Conquer series. I used to play StarCraft as well. But past the first game of StarCraft, I never really got back into it. I tried to play StarCraft 2 when it came out, and it just didn't hold the attention for me. Uh, but I, I've also played that years after it came out uh, as well. And 
But for me, like the Command and Conquer games, like uh, I don't need the cheat codes. I've just got really good at the game. Uh, Red Alert and Red Alert Two are, are by far my favorite Command and Conquer games. Another one I found that uh, I still had the CD to, and I, I I had to try and figure out how to get it to work was Fury Three. Uh, there was a couple of things I had to do to it to get it to work in uh, Windows Ten. Uh, which I wish that the game would get an update because it was such an awesome game. I mean, there really wasn't a lot to it, uh, but it was it was a lot of fun to fly around in the ship and then all the different um, things you got while you were in it. Uh, it was just a really, uh, really fun uh, flight and, and battle simulation game. Uh, and, and I found a lot of enjoyment out of that game over the years. My brother and I used to play the crap out of it. Um but no, I mean, I, I, I've played a lot of stuff like that. I'm still playing Star Trek Online as well. Uh, it's it's one of those things that uh, I didn't play it when it first came out, but I started playing it a year and about a year and a half ago uh, at this point and like really solidly playing it. And I still play it up to this day. Uh, I don't really play uh, Battlefield 4 all that much. I, I've played that a little bit more now. I haven't played Battlefield 1 in probably eight months, maybe six months, some, somewhere in there anyway. Uh, it's kind of old hat to me at this point. I'll, I'll go back to it eventually. I I, I, I kind of do that with a lot of games. I, I just recently beat Mass Effect 2. Um, but no, I was going back through some games and I, I wanted to play like... Uh, I don't know if anybody remembers this. It's a DOS game. Uh, Monuments of Mars. And I, I really... Uh, I, I really enjoy... A lot of the old DOS-based games. Uh, some of them being uh, like Commander Keen uh, 4, like Secret of the Oracle. Then you've got like Descent, uh, Desert Strike. Uh, I used to play Doom, Doom 2, Duke Nukem 3D. Uh, Monuments of Mars was just, it, it was a fun game. It was a side-scroller kind of in the, the vein of like a Mario. But it was like a one-hit, you're dead, and then you start over the whole level. Uh so like if you've used up all your your ammo, um, you could you could essentially kill yourself in the game, and then you would come back and you'd add everything. So, uh, or you could save too, which was kind of revolutionary in in a sense for those old games. Uh, and it was only like two hundred and some kilobytes to play the game. It, it, there's not a lot to it, uh, but I remember beating it once, <laughs> and I played it all day. Uh, because that's I didn't know I could save at the time. I figured that out later on. Um, but no, the, and it's it's a lot of figuring things out. The, there's a site where you can actually go. Uh, I think it's like classicreload.com. You can play a lot of the old Doom games or not Doom games, uh, DOS-based games, uh, and and even some that aren't DOS-based. You can play them on that website, and it it basically emulates it in like a Flash Player type setup somehow. Uh, which is a lot of fun to go back and be able to play these and not have to install them. Because they're kind of freeware at this point, uh, where the, the rights are still owned by the original company, but they just don't really care that people are playing them on there. Um, there was like Adventure Math, where you it's like a Mario Brothers meets math type of stuff. Uh, I used to play that a lot with uh, my brother. And then Crayola Studio... Uh, uh, Math Blaster used to some of, like some of the educational games. I used to play those in my elementary school, which kind of dates me. But uh, uh, like the Putt Putt games, the Backyard, Oregon Trail, Treasure Math Storm, <laughs> Mahjong, Jazz Jack Rabbit. That was one I played a lot of, and then Jazz Jack Rabbit Two. Uh, very weird game, but it, it was it was fun nonetheless. Tried playing Heretic. Didn't really get much into that. Played the Ultimate Doom, Final Doom. Uh, EGA Trek, which is basically like a Star Trek uh, pre-simulator type thing. Uh, I also have the 25th anniversary Star Trek uh, CD-ROM game, which was for DOS, Windows 95, kind of in that realm. Can't play it now, but I, I still have it. I still have the Beast Wars CD uh, that came out in the mid-90s. Uh, CD-ROM game, and I used to have an ISO of it on 
Uh, Predacon Empire, when I had that website, when I when I had the early Transformers website, which I could probably dig some of that up again. I, I have it on a, a external hard drive at this point. Um, I also own the CD, though. Uh, and I had the patch for it, so you didn't need the CD, and it would also upgrade part of the game. Game was stupid uh, difficult in some areas just because it really didn't give you any explanation of what you're supposed to do. There's no explanation of what you're supposed to do in certain things and in certain scenarios. And so you, oftentimes you would get stuck in the levels and not know why. Uh, they were very blocky, pixelated, which is hilarious because you look at the show and they're so smooth and, and everything else. And then you go in the game and the game looks like crap. Uh, <laughs> they're super blocky. Uh, it... It's like if you took the Beast Wars characters and put them in the Combiner Wars and then kind of gave them those jagged edges and kind of, you know, more of the Transformers look than a, a Beast Wars look. It, it's kind of that. And then the voice acting was terrible in it. Uh, some of the aspects, they sounded like the actual actors, but it sounds like it was just poorly imported or, or they got sound or people that could vaguely do the voice. It, it was terrible. Um, but I want to go back and play the game. And unfortunately, because Windows 10 doesn't give you the ability to play any of those, I tried to set it up. I tried to play it. Uh, I, I am trying to tweak the game to where... And I think it's because it's so old. It's, it's older than Podracer. Podracer, there was a workaround. This, I'm having more of a difficult time. Plus, I remember you could play back in the day on MSN Gaming Zone. And yeah, those, those days where you'd log into MSN and, and play games networked with, you know, over the internet with people and, and you could only do like four players. Uh, but I used to do that and I was over dial up and it was terrible. Uh, so I would take up my dad's phone line, like pretty much all day and night. And I would play beast wars, uh, online against other people. And it was like a, basically like a death match. Like, you know, you stand in four corners and then you just attack each other till you're the last bot standing. Um, and you could transform and everything else, but I was insanely good at the multiplayer of it. Um, I, I very rarely got beat, uh, which is why it would be entertaining to go back and try and play the game now. I, I know that it can't connect to the internet, but it's still uh, it's still something I want to try and go back through, play the game, beat it, because I never got past the first level uh, or first couple levels in, in the original uh, the map. Uh, and when you lose a character, you're supposed to be able to go in flight mode as like Air Razor or Terrorsaur and go recapture them and save them. And I could never do that either, uh, because I never got to that point. So, uh, I think maybe once I did, because I vaguely remember seeing it, um, but I, I don't remember how to play it. So, but anyways, that, that's something else I'd like to go back. No, but like gaming is, is one of those things where it's fun to go back and play old games. Uh, whether it's from the PC or not, um, I still enjoy the occasional Mario Brothers and, and Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, you know, like Pac-Man, depending on how I feel, the old uh, Disney Aladdin game from uh, uh, Super Nintendo, uh, Super Smash Brothers, always a favorite of mine in, in gaming, and uh, I don't know, there's just, there's just so many games, uh, Mega Man X, yeah, Mega Man X was another one that I was, I was... Uh, really good at played all the way through x4 and then i bought x6 or x8 and beat that uh on the ps2 uh, galaga yeah like i said there's just so many games that i used to play a lot of dragon ball z games a lot of ninja turtle games um crap load of pokemon games so anyways just kind of running about gaming is one of those things where i'm uh, I, I'm really enthusiastic uh, to go through and and go back and play, and I, I know that other people do that as well. Um, whether it's you know teaching their kids about the old games or just going back for nostalgia's purposes, the it's just the hard part is going back and finding ways that you could play them. Uh, I remember even back when uh, DOS in '95 was something where they had. Uh, I don't know if you remember those 101 best games uh, CDs that used to come out. And they would have all these massive amount of DOS games. And you would run it uh, either from Windows or DOS prompt. Uh, these are back the DOS 95, Windows 95 days. Uh, and 
you could select any of these games, and a lot of the time, a lot of them were just terrible. Like they they just they they just were games that sucked. Uh, but occasionally you would find a couple gems in the in the uh, the CD, and I had a couple of those those sampler discs that that you could buy anywhere. You could get them, you know, they'd have them at computer shows, which are kind of uh, obsolete, non-existent at this point because of online shopping. Uh, and computer shows were were awesome. I don't know. That's that's another thing. Even like going to computer shows. I don't know if anybody used to do that too, but it was kind of like a, a computer convention in a sort. Uh, and I used to go, they used to have two of them a month. They had one in one location, like our, our sports arena uh, in, in downtown Flint. And uh, they had another one in uh, the Holiday Inn Gateway Center in Grand Blank. And I used to go to that one too with my dad. And we used to go every time there was a computer show. And they'd have raffles on, on going in occasionally. Like I think we won something once. Uh, but we used to go in. The The Gateway Center one was was significantly smaller. The one at the sports arena, they just had you walk around the outer part because uh, you had the chairs and everything else, and they would be setting up for some event down at the bottom. But at the top, they would have all the computer stuff. It would be like a uh, Saturday-Sunday thing uh, all day. And we would go every Saturday to these things and they would have these big racks of three and a half inch uh, or three and a quarter inch floppy disks. Uh, the the 1.44 megabyte disks where you could sit there and just check them out and, and, and you would have demos of anything. Like there was Star Wars or Star Trek Doom, which was pretty awesome. You could, uh, uh, it looked like the Enterprise D Somebody like remapped the WAD files, and uh, uh, you could you can install this or, or drag it into your your Doom game uh, folder, and it would it would overlay everything to look Star Trekky, and the sound effects, the uh, the the transporting elements, the the weaponry, it, it was a lot of fun to go through, uh, and I think it gave it like a Captain Kirk face, even though it looked like uh, TNG and a lot of it. Uh, but no, I mean, I, I, that was one of the things I bought. I mean, there was a, a Star Trek trivia game, like a, a old version of it, like an Alcars. I bought, um, the Star Trek Omnipedia database, uh, there one time. And it was, it was kind of interesting to, to get that. Uh, and you could haggle. That was, that was a nice thing too, is, is if you didn't have enough money for something, you could kind of haggle with them and they would kind of do it cause they were, you know, at the show and you could get a discount and. Oftentimes, I was like a dollar or two short on some like floppy that my dad was like, it's it's too pri- overpriced anyway on some of the stuff. And that's way back then. And I, I would occasionally do that, get something. And uh, he would go through, look at all the computer parts. Because you could, you could go there and have a computer built for you while you're sitting there. And he, he oftentimes would do something like that. Uh, maybe once or twice a year. Uh, would, would go through and just buy parts to upgrade ours at home. And... It, it was very educational and, and fun at the same time. And you get to see all the technology as it was coming out because some, some retailers would have different, uh, like that was one of the first time I'd seen a flat panel monitor or uh, a DVD player, like before I even owned some of the stuff. And, it, you know, CD-ROMs, because uh, we, we barely had one of those. And... It, it, you they even had places where they had uh, uh, I bought up my first controller there. It was like a five dollar or ten dollar controller that looked like a Sega Genesis controller and then I bought another one that was like an SNES controller uh, and plugged into the old uh, uh, game ports in the back of the PC before they you know USB existed. Uh, which it sucked because if those things like popped out you had to reprogram your your device it wasn't it wasn't a lot of fun to. Uh, uh, troubleshoot that stuff compared to now where you just plug it in and it works. Um, that's the beautiful thing of plug and play compared to back then. It, everything just kind of works. Uh, it was it was a struggle. The struggle was real. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that was a lot of a lot of the stuff that I used to see as a kid. Uh, you know, aside from all the the television aspects that that kind of talked about in the last episode. Of, of things coming back. And there were shows I missed when I talked about it, but it, regardless, it's not, 
it's not that much different. Even with games, it's, it's harder to screw up a game than it is a TV show because a game you can only really improve as, as far as aesthetically and story. Uh, but you could also have, you know, things that turn into a dumpster fire the entire time, and that's uh, a, a problem with gaming as well. Um, but majority of the old 90s stuff, I, I found a lot of enjoyment in it. Uh, it, there, it used to take up a lot of my time. I used to sit there and play a lot of that stuff. Um, didn't really have, uh, well, I guess, I guess something that was kind of neat about back then with gaming even is, is you had demos of games, uh, which I kind of wish we still had today. And they used to have websites that had that kind of stuff now, but they, they don't even put out games like that anymore. It's, you can do like a trial of the game if you download it from somewhere. So, I mean, in a sense, it's kind of the same. It's just that they're handling it themselves instead of outsourcing. Uh, but they try and hook you with the subscription model uh, for the for the demo, as it as it were, instead of having the freely downloadable demos of of games out. Um, but I I kind of found that it was nice to have the demos because you could kind of sample uh, what it is you're interested in and and. Uh, but I guess that's where the subscription model kind of takes place. So like if you sign up for like EA Origin or something or or Steam or uh, and do some kind of a subscription. Uh, base system and, and do like a trial uh, you can kind of sample some of the stuff or if you keep signed on you can just play the games that are in their service so I don't know I, I think it translated well it's just I I preferred the just being able to just download it and have what I want and not have to pay anything uh, but I can see where that's not really feasible in today's world uh, compared to back then I used to remember a lot of <laughs> A lot of different websites you could download stuff from that are no longer existent anymore. Uh, and then even looking at, at things like uh, uh, just nostalgia in general. It's it's fun to reminisce and look back on the things. And some of it, you can in hindsight, you can kind of see where things failed and things could have been better. Uh, but ultimately, it's uh, innovation has definitely helped a lot of these things. It's definitely been something that, uh, you know, nostalgia, it, while it's great, uh, can lead to better things in the future. It's just, when you come to things with a storyline like TV and film, it not it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to translate. But things like gaming and, and innovation and technology, it's it's definitely uh, uh, something that can, can help spawn new and uh, better options as it were so i hope you guys had some kind of a fun kind of reminiscing over some of that uh let me know what kind of games you guys used to play uh, i i left off a ton that i would have played on console i i made cover console nostalgia at another time uh with with a co-host but uh i i just i found myself looking through some of this the other day and i i was going man i i really I really want to talk about some of these things because a lot of these games were a lot of fun. Uh, and, and especially when I used to emulate a lot of these things. And maybe maybe that would be something fun to do is to sit on uh, a, a live stream and maybe like play some of these these games and uh, uh, have have commentary and just talk while, uh, while I'm playing a game. So, I don't know. Maybe that's something we'll do. Uh, but... Let me know what you guys you guys uh, had fun playing as uh, in the '90s and and your earliest experiences with gaming and uh, just let me know what you guys think in the comments area so you can get this on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, uh, SoundCloud. You can get this on Geekcast Radio, Altered Geek, and ThisWeekInGeek.net. Uh, and you can get a hold of me on Twitter at SCP21. Be sure to use the hashtag What's Geeky to You. So that I can find that easily, or you can comment uh, at Altered Geek. Uh, so until next time, get altered, get geeky with the Altered Geeks.